Hey, my name is Jacob Guyman, and today I will be doing an introduction to database access layers. Um, I'm a student at Utah State University, and I am doing some research. I'm doing a little bit of software development, and I wanted to research, all right, how do I develop a data access layer? What sort of things do I need to consider? And how do I, how do I design my software a little bit better? In software development, there's a concept called abstraction. Abstraction means to reduce something down to its simplest form. This is very important in software development because it allows us to be able to make code modular. This modularity makes it easier to maintain, develop, and move if needed in the future. You can make code modular, or abstract it out, by separating it out into different layers. This diagram gives a great example of that, by being able to separate your data out into three tiers the presentation layer, the application layer, and the data layer. The presentation layer is where the client will interact with the server. It is at this layer that people will click, manipulate, and interact with your website or application. The application layer is where your business logic will go. This could be also called the back end of the code, or as part of the back end, this is where you will know what to do with the data that you will receive and what to do with what the client asks for. And finally, the cream of the crop, the data layer, or the database access layer. The data layer is where your application will interact with your database. It is where you transmit data back and forth, and you're able to retrieve the data for your clients. An important thing to look at is how does a database access layer differ from a three-tier structure than from a typical program. In a typical program, when you submit a query to the database to return a certain data set, you get back the rows and the columns from that query set, from that returned query. From there, you must get the data. You must put it into either a two-dimensional array or into a grid, and then you, will, you would break it up, separate it, and assign methods to that to get this column, to get this data, to get this format. That can be difficult and it can make it tricky to maintain. Instead, let's take a look at how the database access layer should properly handle it. In a data access layer, you can see here that there's two different parts of it as you're designing one. This is where we correlate the class and the application with our database entities. When we're doing it, if you notice that the fields in our class should line up with our rows and columns in the database entity. This allows us to be able to grab the information that we need directly from the database and pass it back to our program as an object instead of as a series of rows and columns inside of an array. The last thing to consider in a data access layer is how will you represent this? How will you document this data? An important part of doing that is called Object Relational Mapping, ORM. In this, you can display how your classes and your entities in your database relate to each other. This is often done by using UML, or Unified Markup Language. This is commonly used in programming to symbolize the relationships between many objects, such as one-to-many, many-to-many, or zero-to-many. And that's all I have for you today, folks. Thanks so much for watching. If you look at the link below, there will be a link to my Google Drive, which will have my sources, my documentation, and a little bit of my analysis of what I've learned. If you stay tuned next week, there will be another one. Thank you.